Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is U.S. Immigration Attorney Hardim Tripathi from Trip Law. Today, I want to really talk to you about how do you go from an F-1 visa to an E-2 visa, and what is an E-2 visa, and why should you, as a student, consider the E-2 visa option as a way to obtain legal status in these great United States of America? Well, first and foremost, an E-2 visa is an opportunity where there's treaty-based countries with the United States that allow individuals from that third country to then invest in the United States and ultimately have that opportunity to live that American dream and ultimately get a return on their investment create jobs, and provide a lot of value to the United States communities. And so if you are an F-1 visa holder and you're specifically in these STEM fields where there's a lot of need for people in the IT space or people in the spaces that are traditionally required in the STEM industries, then you have an opportunity to create your own business here in the United States. And so what an E-2 business is, is it's like I said, the treaty countries and you have the opportunity to ultimately own and actually manage that enterprise in real time through an investment that you make that's a substantial investment. Now, most of the students I talk to, because I'm also an adjunct professor at a very large institution here in Florida, a uh, major university, where I get a lot of questions from my students saying, Attorney Tripathi, how do I go from being a student to actually living in these United States legally through legal status, and I want to operate my own business? We're very forward thinkers. Uh, if you're listening in today, you've already taken that first step. You've probably liked and subscribed to our channel. You've done a very wonderful job at finding interest and probably have done research of your own. Well, this is where hiring that attorney comes into play, right? because you're ultimately going from student status to E2 status, and you're probably very driven by the entrepreneurship. It's kind of the, 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 the thing that America really wants, right? It's, it's people operating their own businesses, having the freedom to run their business the way they can based on their intellect, based on their experience and skill sets, based on their STEM degree uh, that they have from a, through the F1 at that major university. Um, so basically, entrepreneurship is on the rise, right? And we've already talked about what is an E-2 visa. We've talked about why entrepreneurship is so important. Well, now we, we'll dive right in. Ultimately, what will happen is a lot of y'all will have OPT. It stands for Optional Practical Training. And you will have that F-1 visa. You'll get put into OPT status. And now that you're in OPT, you're legally doing what you have to do here in the United States through um, all the studies and the work and whatnot. But ultimately, you want to translate that into an E-2 long-term uh, visa solution that will ultimately help you drive efforts within your industry based on the knowledge and training that you've experienced at that university. So the first option for a lot of people that I tell when, I, when my students come up, I say, you know what, are you in OPT? Are you in a STEM environment? If you are, you have this OPT uh, opportunity where you can go from your OPT status to E2. And so ultimately what will end up happening is that a lot of these people post-graduation OPT, once it's approved, you could run your own business while you're on OPT, which is actually a really great thing. It's a great opportunity for you. And another thing is there's a lot of OPT policy guidance uh, from the US government itself that really talks about what you can find online, what you can do in real time. But we are going to be your lawyers. We'll help you through that. And you know, there's always these relevant skill sets that you have. So ultimately what you can do is, you know, it might be tough to start your business on OPT, but unless your business is related to like other sorts of endeavors, you know, it's gonna be very difficult. But so that's why you gotta realize what is your marketing plan? What is your business model? These are all things we'll walk you through. And we have partners in the business space through business consulting, franchise consulting, and things of that nature. But it's a really good fit if you are someone who is on OPT status wanting to then translate it over to F1 status. So if this applies to you and you're listening in today, you need to realize that your universities are going to help you with this as well. The universities have certain uh, sections within their universities that will talk about OPT to uh, ultimately E2. And we as your lawyers will serve as your partners. One really good thing is we have to show that you've applied for what's called an EIN. That's called uh, an employment, uh, employee excuse me, identification number. That shows that your business has this EIN number. You can open up that business bank account. You can then take that and then transfer personal funds that you've earned overseas into the business account here in the United States. So it's, it's a very strong opportunity for you to now transplant the funds that you've earned overseas with the skill sets that you have, and then change it into the E2 investment. So such a great opportunity for ultimately starting your own business, hiring the right people, and ultimately carrying forth what you've learned and moving forward. Now, as you generate that income, remember that you can then use that money to then put it into your E2 business 
and then you can then do an adjustment from your F1 visa to the E2 visa via the embassy overseas in your home country. So there will be a point where you'll travel back to your home country, you'll do your interview there, and then you'll be able to then come back to the United States with your E2 in hand. Another thing is you could actually just maintain legal status by just adjusting it here in the, U uh, in the United States via USCIS, and we'll help you with that. The other thing is um, you can also run a business um, you know, your business on OPT, but you can also do it when, if you don't go through that route, let's say you're uh, ultimately just doing it where you're just an F1. Well, then you can run your business through different regards uh, where you can actually go from E2 stat, or you can get to E2 status um, after you had the OPT, but also while you had the F1. So remember, you can't travel outside the country. You have to make sure you stay in your course of study, but you can also come in and out once you get the E2. So there's a lot of various complicated issues with respect to this, uh, depending on your status at the time. What if you're not an OPT? Well, then give us a call. We'll look at your holistic profile. We'll look at kind of what you've been studying. We'll look at your resume. We'll look at your job opportunities. And also we'll look at if it's a better alternative to just create your own business through, through the uh, E2 visa program. So if you have any questions on this, please feel free to give us a call. The number here is 863-370-2427. Or you can like and subscribe, reach out to us at info at trip-law.com. And we'd be more than happy to walk you through this process that can be very burdensome if you're a student. So we wish you the best of luck with your E2 journey, but at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that we can help you go from your F1 to E2. So thank you very much for listening in. We hope this was helpful and we wish you the best with your immigration journey. Thank you.